Alrighty guys, a very warm welcome to another video. So today I want to give you my thoughts on the recent news that Peter Boll has failed an out of competition drug test for EPO or erythropoietin recombinant. So recombinant EPO, this is not in any way um, endogenous EPO, this is external recombinant, only gets into your system via injection EPO. So Peter Ball, Australian 800 meter runner, also 1500 meters, um, you know, fourth at the Olympics, second at the Commonwealth Games in recent years. Um, a real Australian hero for many. He was the, uh, I think it was like WA person of the year or athlete of the year or whatnot. But uh, we'll read through this article and I'll give you my thoughts on why it does not at all look very good for Peter Ball, unfortunately, uh, due to the nature of how this substance would have to get into his body. Uh, this is not just merely a case of something that can be contaminated in a, in a food product like we've seen with many athletes before. Um, and they've used that reason as to why, you know, an adverse analytical finding could have resulted. And often it's been true and they've been successful. However, this is in no way a case like this. Also, to my knowledge, there has been no uh, B samples that have come back any different to an A sample uh, when looking at EPO, particularly in recent years with advances in testing, etc. So first of all, why would an athlete use EPO in general? Obviously, anyone who's an endurance athlete wants to improve their oxygen carrying capacity. Oxygen is carried around by hemoglobin, which is contained in red blood cells in the uh, circulatory system, and EPO or erythropoietin, which is a natural a hormone endogenously produced by the kidneys. Essentially, this upregulates the production of hemoglobin and red blood cells, primarily red blood cells. So erythropoietin will increase red blood cell concentration. You have greater percentage of red blood cells in the blood and therefore be able to carry more oxygen around the body at any given time and work at a higher intensity for a longer duration of time. So that is in theory why an athlete would like to or would be uh, have reason to use EPO. Now, obviously, I'm not going to make any judgments or say whether I think Peter did or did not intentionally or ingest EPO or is guilty for, um, you know, EPO use or doping. However, what I will say is that it does not look good. And, um, you know, we'll dive into this article First, so Australian Olympic athlete Peter Boll fails out of competition doping test. The 800 meter strongly, 800 meter runner strongly denies ever using banned agent EPO. And Korea is hanging in the balance, says the national record holder. So here is a photo of him competing in Birmingham uh, at the 2022 Commonwealth Games. And we will read through. The Olympic athlete Peter Boll has been provisionally suspended by Athletics Australia after the 800 metre runner failed an out of competition doping test. Boll, whose performances at the Tokyo Olympics marked him as one of Australia's brightest track and field stars, was informed last week that an A sample taken from him in October last year returned an adverse analytical finding. So the test showed signs of synthetic, synthetic EPO, a performance enhancing agent that is on the World Anti-Doping Agency ban list. The national 800 meter record holder and Commonwealth Games silver medalist strongly denies having ever used EPO and said that he was totally shocked by the finding. He has requested a B sample be analyzed, which is within every athlete, athlete's right to request the B sample to be analyzed whenever they return or if they do uh, return an adverse analytical finding as per Australian National Anti-Doping Policy Guidelines. That will happen in February. It is critically important to convey with the strongest conviction that I am innocent and that I have not taken the substance as I am accused, Bol said. I ask that everyone in Australia believe me and let the process play out. While suspended, the 28-year-old will not be permitted to train at a national, state or club level, compete at any level, coach, receive funding, use official or member facilities, or hold a position with a sporting organization. Ball said that he would co cooperate fully with sports in uh, Sport Integrity Australia as he works through a fair hearing process with his career literally hanging in the balance. To be clear, I've never used, I've never in my life purchased, researched, possessed, administered, or used synthetic EPO 
or any other prohibited substance, he said, I voluntarily turned over my laptop, iPad, and phone to support uh, Integrity Australia to prove this. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't matter so much whether his phone, laptop, any of his electronic devices show that he's researched this compound because obviously, you know, many athletes, athletes at this level, if they were to be using a compound like APO, it would be very rare that they would be doing it purely on their own. Um, I'm not saying this is what Peter Ball has done. However, it doesn't prove innocence just if, you know, it turns out that he hasn't, in fact, researched the compound or purchased the compound himself. You know, often there's outside help, whether it's um, anyone else on his team uh, or supporting him, coaching, doctors, whatever. And I'm not going to make assumptions, but a wall I'll say is that this does not prove innocence for him, unfortunately. Above all, I remain hopeful that the process will exonerate me. Ball was one of Australia's stars at the 2020 Olympics held in 2021 uh, due to the pandemic, uh, when he became the first Australian to reach an 800 metre final at the game since 1968. A thrilling run in the final, which saw him lead the world's best, but ultimately miss out on a bronze medal by a whisker, whisper, whisker, captured the imagination of a nation. He was born in November. Uh, so, born. <laughs> He was, in November, named Western Australia's Young Australian of the Year for both his athletic achievements and his work off the track. He also works as a coach, mentor, keynote speaker, and has been recognised for his philanthro uh, philanthropic, uh, philanthropic, I can't even get the words out now, philanthropic, philanthropic efforts. The CEO of Athletics Australia, Peter Bromley, said the adverse analytical finding was extremely concerning and came out of the blue. Uh, there are procedural fairness and investigative considerations that can constrain how much we can say. And at this point, it would be inappropriate for Athletics Australia or anyone else to speculate about the specific details or preempt any outcome, Bromley said. Athletics Australia is a signatory um, to the World Anti-Doping Code and the Australian National Anti-Doping Policy and provides anti-doping education in partnership with Sports Integrity Australia. We fully support the highly effective testing protocols that exist to ensure that everyone who breaches the anti-doping policy is caught and appropriately sanctioned. Every athlete, coach, and spectator wants and deserves a level playing field, Bromley said. A prim primary consideration right now is the appropriate process, is that the appropriate process is followed and that it is not undermined in any speculation uh, or inappropriate speculation, I should say. Bromley added that Bowles' welfare remained welfare remain critical throughout the upcoming process, and Athletics Australia would provide necessary support to the athlete. Um, and I think comments are turned off on this, uh, and that's kind of fair enough. So, obviously, you know, when we think about a drug like EPO, we need to realize that it is only ever going to end up in the bloodstream recombinant epo that's what we're talking about not exogenous recombinant manufactured epo is only going to be end up in a bloodstream if it's injected epo is a peptide hormone you could literally drink a solution containing you know pure epo right and the stomach would break it down it would not return a positive analytical finding so this is why it does not look good uh in ball's case because obviously you know we've had cases in the past of like for example shelby houlihan with the nandrolone burrito um arguing obviously she didn't get she didn't get off the hook but she was arguing that the burrito was contaminated with nandrolone because of the awful meat or pig meat or whatever it was um and this has been shown in, in cases in the past you know athletes have um i, I guess circumnavigated uh, suspensions uh, for compounds like clenbuterol, which has been shown to be contaminated in particular meats in particular regions of the world. EPO has never been shown to be, you know, of anything like this uh, case at all. So only ever going to be found in the system via injection. Um, very hard to prove contaminated supplementation. And also it was an out of competition test. So a lot of people are in Australia are getting behind this whole idea of well, balls past, you know, over twenty doping tests in the in the past, and that proves his innocence. He would never dope. We'll obviously realize that a compound like EPO has a half life, 
when injected subcutaneously, which it was originally manufactured to do, over or to be administered, uh, you know, as a subcutaneous injection into the the fat, of around twenty four hours, half life of twenty four hours. You know, um, generally compounds will be detectable up to around five times their half life if they're a natural compound or similar to a natural compound. Um, so EPO would, for example, like that. However, what athletes found out very quickly in the early, you know, two thousands or even, even um, yeah, I guess early two thousands when the EPO test really came into effect. Before that, there wasn't even a test for it. Um, was that microdosing? So very small amounts of EPO done intravenously, so directly into the bloodstream, were able to one obviously reduce the concentration of EPO in the system at any given time. But two, it really exaggerate or speed up the process of elimination because it's not sitting in the fat stores, getting absorbed slowly. It's directly in the blood. And therefore, the whole concentration is in the blood very quickly and it will be eliminated very quickly thereafter. This was an out-of-competition test. Uh, Presumably, you know, when athletes have microdosed intravenously, WADA will never come out and say exactly what the detection time is, of course, because then that could be... uh, I guess, you know, manipulate or that could be used and uh, taken advantage of by athletes. However, you know, a lot of research has has kind of suggested anywhere in the realm of, um, you know, EPO microdose intravenously having a half-life of like, you know, four to six hours. So you're probably going to test positive for a day, half a day, a little bit longer than a day, depending on your genetics, depending on the dose, depending on uh, many factors. So obviously out of competition test if this is indeed a true uh positive result we would assume he's probably done it in the few hours before the test was conducted or at least in the you know 12 or so hours before the test was conducted so unlucky in that instance if if it is the case and if if he is positive obviously we need to wait for the uh, b sample but this whole idea of you know passing drug tests in the past and that being proof of innocence it doesn't hold any weight at all because we know that obviously Lance Armstrong passed hundreds of drug tests and never went positive. So, you know, it's definitely, uh, in my opinion, it's not looking good for various reasons uh, due to the nature of the compound, due to the way it can only really be found in the system and due to the accuracy of the EPO detection tests, which which are able to, uh, with very high certainty, distinguish between endogenously produced EPO, which the body naturally makes, and recombinant EPO, which is produced as an exogenous, you know, uh, medication to be injected into the body. So that's my thoughts on it. Obviously, um, as an Australian, I'd like to hope that he could, uh, uh, that he's not, you know, guilty. However, I think that being a realist at the high level of sports, and particularly in the endurance sports where uh, a drug like that is going to be so advantageous, you know, I, I have my doubts. However, I'm going to wait to the, obviously until it is confirmed before I make any uh, set in stone uh, opinions or or whatever on the actual case itself. But that's my thoughts and opinions. That's why I think it doesn't look good at all for him. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below. Appreciate all the engagement, guys. Take care. Hope everyone is keeping well. And I just thought I'd bring some light to this recent news and give my opinion and uh you know i guess dispel some of the myths of well maybe it could have been a contaminated supplement or something he ate or maybe the tests aren't accurate or you know maybe his laptop proves his innocence or the fact he's been um you know had negative drug tests in the past proves his innocence none of it really does at all uh so that's my thoughts there take care guys i'll see you in the next video